Today, guys, we're gonna coach up Mario Rios. Got a video here. We're gonna see if Mario Rios has a clue what he's talking about. Talk for the chest. Yes, the chest really only does a few things. Like it does shoulder adduction. It also does shoulder extension and shoulder flexion. Oh my God. Oh my God. He literally said that the chest does shoulder extension. This just proves that IFBB pros are the biggest idiots on the planet. So this IFBB Pro bodybuilder called me out. Essentially saying I'm wrong and saying I'm toxic. You know, the typical butthurt bodybuilder response. And this is one of the worst reaction videos I've seen in my takes ever. And we've seen some pretty bad ones in the past. I wasn't planning on reacting to this video because let's be honest, I'm his big brother. But people in the comments didn't even realize the nonsense he was saying, but were just supporting him because they're also part of the butthurt bodybuilder club. The ones that live rent free in their head. They were saying this is what I wanted because he reacted to my video even though I get way more views than this guy. So I'll make him relevant by proving he's wrong. So let's see what this dumb bodybuilder has to say about one of my videos. Hey man, I hope whatever bodybuilder piss you off, hope you can really find it in your heart to forgive him. I will never forgive the fitness matrix. And that's why I don't like bodybuilders. They promote an unhealthy, unattractive style of living to you. So no, I will never forgive bodybuilders. Don't even try and manipulate me to forgiving these mass monsters. Today guys, we're gonna coach up Mario Rios. Got a video here. We're gonna see if Mario Rios has a clue what he's talking about. Let's go Mario, let's put you on the chopping block. Sebum is a gym bum, because his chest workout sucks. Good four time Mr. Olympia Sebum's chest workout and here's how it went. His chest workout has over 20 sets. That's enough volume for a whole week, let alone one workout. And it has way too many exercises. Chest workouts are literally so simple. Have an incline press to build that shelf upstairs, a flat bench to build the lower chest and strength overall, and your chest also adducts your arms. So you just put in a variation of a cable fly. And you only need eight to 12 sets for the entire workout. If you're doing more than this, you're just an idiot. So I'm gonna react to my own video here. This is just my classic Mario Rios, Leon Edwards banger. I piss off some bodybuilders at the very beginning of the video, address the video, and then give you guys great advice to help you with your training. But since these bodybuilders get their feelings hurt, they start thinking with their heart and not their brain, just like this guy. Let's see what he has to say. Okay, so um, unfortunately, uh, one thing he said was true-ish? but left out a lot of things. So one of the things I said is true-ish, essentially saying I'm right, but I don't wanna say he's right. Then he says I left out a lot of things. We're gonna see what he addresses later, but it's a YouTube short, bro. The reason my shorts get so many views is because I address one topic in an entertaining way. If I try to address a bunch of subtopics, it'd be way too long and with this TikTok generation, these people lose focus in like five, 10 seconds. Like here's the thing, man, I get it. For the shock value, we gotta insult the shit out of somebody without like any really good, any you know, real reason or some merit. Insult the shit out of somebody. Sebum is a gym bum. In my opinion, I just think that's hilarious. And to get some views, I get it. There's a better way of doing this thing. There's better ways of doing this thing? Well, the analytics say there isn't. Before you make fun of multiple winning classic physique Olympian, most probably those, one of the most popular people on the planet right now and say this workout sucks, have some knowledge to back it up. Leon Edwards is more popular than him, so you're just speaking out of your ass here. All right, number one, here's a hole in that statement. He's leaving out a ton, okay? Eight to 12 sets, yes, eight to 12 hard sets. <sighs> oh my God, oh my God. That's like going to Chick-fil-A and saying, hey, I want a Chick-fil-A sandwich, but please cook it. Of course they're gonna cook it. 99% of people, when they say I did 12 sets at the gym, mean hard sets. Nobody counts warm-up sets as a set. So you suggesting I don't know what I'm talking about, yet you use a technicality which no one uses, no one was confused by, everybody knew what I meant to try and prove me wrong. Eight to 12 hard sets. That doesn't mean feeler sets, warm-up sets, whatever, you know what I mean? It doesn't, doesn't add that. So like, yes, 20 hard sets in a workout is astronomical. It's ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense at all. Which was the entire point of the video. So that statement right there just confirmed, you know, I know exactly what I'm talking about. This video was clearly created off an emotion because I hurt this guy's feelings. I probably hurt one of his buddy's feelings. So that's the main point of his video, that I didn't say working sets. I didn't say I wanted my chicken cooked, so when I ate the raw chicken, I got sick, so it's my fault. But it's eight to 12 hard sets. We're not including the other sets. So to say that Sebum's workout was 20 plus hard sets for the entire time is actually ridiculous. He obviously didn't look at it, or maybe the video didn't have that much 
I don't know, detail in terms of like what our rest sets and I mean, what are warm up sets or whatever? Not one TikTok or YouTube short video that you see is saying that the sets they give you is warm up set. If they were referencing warm up sets, they'd be confusing the crap out of you because you wouldn't know what they were talking about. We all know in the video that I mentioned and in Sebum's workout, every set he mentions is a working set. If it's not a working set, they'll tell you it's a warm up set. It's not that hard, bro. I know you wanna say I'm wrong by creating some nonsense and convincing your stupid fans that I'm wrong, who by the way in the comment section didn't even address how I'm wrong, we're just supporting you because you called me out even though this was the weakest call out I've ever seen. But if you look at it, guys, he said eight to 12, but it should be eight to 12 hard sets. Let's say you do 10 hard sets, 10 of them, all right? 10 hard sets, and guess what? There's also 10 warm up sets. That's not that, that's, it's really not that much. 10 warm-up sets is actually a lot in my opinion. I'm gonna address my warm-up really quick. This is a warm-up I've been doing for about four years. I've never gotten hurt and I keep gaining strength. I did make a strength video going over how strong my brother and I are with this warm-up. And if you see our relative strength numbers, especially for never training for strength before, they're crazy. And that's with this warm-up. So I only warm up for my big lift. So on back day, I only warm up for the deadlift. If I, it's a leg day, I warm up for the squat, chest, bench press, shoulder, military press. So my first warm-up set is 50% of my working weight for 12 reps. My second warm warm-up set which is eight reps of 60 to 70 percent of my working weight then i'll do my third warm-up set which will be four reps between 70 to 80 percent of my working weight and if i'm lifting heavy which means basically over eight reps i kind of consider heavy i'll do one more warm-up set for two reps 85 percent of my working weight that's it that's something i've done in my personal life i've seen it work i do it with my clients who i train in real life and it works. They don't get injured and they keep gaining strength. These warm-up sets follow a dynamic stretching routine, which I'll address in a future video. Basically, like leg swings for my leg day. That's a dynamic stretches that you do before. Then you do this warm-up set routine and I've never got injured, keep gaining strength, practical application. He does so many warm-up sets during his workout. That's why bodybuilders are there for two hours. How many exercises do you actually need per muscle group? Well, it's like one to three. Right, and there's some overlap. Like, so let's talk for the chest. Yes, the chest really only does a few things. Like it does shoulder adduction. It also does shoulder extension and shoulder flexion. It does this and it does this. Oh my God, oh my God. This just proves that IFBB pros are the biggest idiots on the planet. Yet people believe them because they take steroids and they have great genetics. Someone like this guy could touch a weight and he'd still grow. He literally said that the chest does shoulder extension. It, this just proves that bodybuilders have no idea about the anatomy of the human body. What the muscle does depends on where it originates and where it inserts. And a muscle can't do opposing actions on the same joint. That's like saying the tricep extends your arm or straightens your arm and curls your arm at the same time. It does both. That's what he said about the chest. He said the chest extends your shoulder. That's what the lats and the triceps do. Yet nobody in the comments section of his video recognized this. This shows how dumb these bodybuilders are. It shows how dumb these bodybuilding fans are. Just flip open anatomy book, which I have and I did, which it will show you what the pec major does, which is glenohumeral adduction. You said shoulder adduction, but if we use your logic, which is saying I'm wrong because of a technicality, I could say you're wrong here too. You also didn't mention it, it does internal rotation of the shoulder, the stupidity of saying it extends the shoulder, but it also flexes the shoulder or the glenohumeral joint. If you guys trust this guy, I do not know what to tell you. I'm not gonna lie, I should cut the video there because he said the pec major extends the shoulder. But work with me here, just try and get through this like I am. That's so him telling anybody, hey guys, you don't gotta train like Sebum who looks absolutely amazing. You only have to do eight to 12 sets, that's it. What about reps? Time out of tension? Sentensifiers? Does that mean anything at all? It's a YouTube short, which I try and keep between 20 and 30 seconds to engage my audience. That's like going to an ice cream shop, having an ice cream as a dessert, and then complaining that you didn't get a full course meal. That's what this guy is doing. And also real quick, this guy looks better than this guy and it's not even close. Then it kind of goes into like some like more complex things about how to make a muscle grow and things like that. Making a muscle grow is super simple. Eight to 12 sets per workout per muscle group. Oh my bad, eight to 12 working sets. Working the six to 12 rep range, 
The reason I say six to 12, even though research shows that anywhere between five and 30 reps, as long as you train close to failure, will elicit the same amount of muscle growth, is because every strength and conditioning book you'll see will say six to 12 rep range. And it's not because six to 12 reps magically builds muscle, it's because six to 12 reps will give you the optimal time under tension to build muscle. And as long as you're training hard, which means somewhere within failure, I say within three reps of failure, you're gonna grow. There's a lot missing in this. There's a ton missing. A ton. Of course there's a ton missing because this is a dessert, not a full course meal. A short is a dessert. So I guess before we go and say, hey, Seabum is an idiot. He's doing too much stuff. You just said nothing. You didn't show why. You just said a bunch of stuff and said eight to 12 reps is all you need. Well, first it's eight to 12 sets, not reps. And second, that's what the video was about. It was about Seabum doing too much volume, particularly for natural lifters. Suggesting that a short video, which is about 30 seconds, should have the same amount of information as a 10 to 20 minute long video is just stupid. But whatever bodybuilders can do to try and somehow say I'm wrong. If you ever see a bodybuilder or a bodybuilding fan saying Marius promotes misinformation, that's because I hurt their feelings. And this is a clear example. They have nothing to say. And let me give you something, man. You're welcome for doing this video, but I gotta show it. There's rapid growth here. A lot of people are gonna see this. That's facts. I do have rapid growth because everyone's trying to escape the fitness matrix and I'm here to make fitness great again. Merch coming soon, by the way. Oh, something. And this is for everybody out there. This is not just for my boy. Mario. He said rapid growth and then immediately didn't know my name. Dude, I genuinely didn't know your name. You obviously knew my name. I mean, let's be honest, every bodybuilder at this point knows my name. So you're not fooling anyone with that one. If you're a aspiring coach, aspiring trainer, whatever you want to call it, nutritionist, I don't care. And you want to put it on YouTube and, and, and TikTok or whatever and go through all of the things in terms of practicing everything. I went from 130 pounds to 180 pounds, and now I'm cutting down to almost 160 pounds to build my most aesthetic physique. I've been practicing this for a long time. I didn't have to use steroids like you. I didn't have great genetics like you. You weren't built off of great information. You were built off a needle. Plus, I went through four years of school to make sure I sharpened all my tools, and I'm an actual personal trainer in real life. So this was just, I don't even know what you were trying to do here, but it didn't work. And if you're a coach, let's talk about form. So if you're gonna go on here and say Seabum is a whatever, but your form is subpar, and, and, and what you're saying? Not a good look, but I get it. Shock brow, clout, right? I get it. So he says my form is bad. Didn't show a video of my form, didn't address a certain thing, just assumes my form is bad. That's like me telling you, hey, you don't squat to depth, even though I've never seen you squat before. A fair assumption with me saying, you have no cardio, you move like a brick. That's a fair assumption. And then you say, I don't know what I'm talking about. Well, you were the one who said the pec major or the chest does shoulder extension. Yet I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, bro. You guys, check it out. If you're if you're looking for a coach that knows what they're talking about, check out my- RiosTwins.com. It's a website I launched with my brother that has training programs. We're gonna be constantly adding new things. You even get a free push-pull leg and a free power workout when you join my athletic bodybuilding school free trial, which you can pause or cancel at any time. In this community, you can message me personally. You'll get two Zoom calls, one with me, one of my brother during your free trial period. And you get to interact with all the other people who are trying to escape the fitness matrix. Bodybuilders are mentally ill. It's the only explanation for a bodybuilder style of training. They sit on their asses because they're lazy. They avoid all the tough exercise, lots of vices. So he skipped that video because I had so much to say in that video, which explains the fitness matrix. In that video, I mentioned how bodybuilders are mentally ill because they do a style of training that worsens their health, worsens their looks, and worsens their performance. All three which are facts. But you would have stood there speechless, not being able to defend yourself if you watch the rest of that video. I know you watched that video before because clearly you're a fan. Just like all these other bodybuilders. This advice is all wrong. It really makes sense that lifting weights is better for fat loss when in fact it burns fewer calories than doing cardio. And so if you want to lose weight and keep it off for the rest of your life, does it not make sense to add cardio? It's great to see a steroid hit advocating for cardio, but cardio is the best short term solution for weight loss, not best long term. Mid to high intensity cardio can be very taxing on the body because of high volume. And with that comes an increase in appetite. So in terms of satiety, it's not great. And intensity, it will get in the way of your weightlifting routine, which is the best long term solution for weight loss because muscles active tissues. So unlike fat, it burns calories. So the more muscle you build, the more calories your body will burn, which will keep off the bad weight and put on good weight. And in terms of aesthetics, if cardio is your priority, you will never look good. Uh, all right, if you, that's the dumbest thing i heard in the world. Okay, let's hear it. Let's hear what you think is the dumbest thing you've heard in the world. The dumbest thing I've heard in the world 
is someone saying the pec major does shoulder extension. Every time like, he's showing a bunch of fighters, does he not realize that, you know, the, the body that he says is, is, is amazing is also like coupled with cardio? Like this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm sorry. Like cardio. Like all the fighters he's showing, majority of their training is cardio. I coached boxer. It's cardio. Firstly, I never said not to do cardio. Second, you don't know periodization for MMA athletes like I do. The MMA athletes will do cardio, specifically high intensity cardio closer to their fight within two months. But the rest of the time, it's maintenance of cardio and then doing periodization training, which means building muscle, which helps you build strength, which helps you build power. But you didn't know that because you don't know periodization for athletes like I do. You're just an IFBB pro steroid head bodybuilder who assumes he knows what he's talking about because of the steroids and the great genetics. Just like, just to have a good old healthy life, to do the bare minimum, it's 150 minutes a week of just Zone two cardio, bad advice. Again, I never said not to do cardio. I even have a video going over bedroom cardio. The only thing I ever say related to not doing cardio is not doing mid intensity cardio because it doesn't build your aerobic endurance or your anaerobic endurance because it's in the middle. So you don't get very big benefits on either. Make your hard runs hard to build your anaerobic endurance, make your easy runs easy to build your aerobic endurance. And I recommend doing light intensity cardio for aesthetic purposes. I have addressed that so many times. This guy has probably heard me say that before, but walking is by far the best for aesthetics because it's low intensity and low impact. Obviously, I don't know, something happened with him and a bodybuilder. Hey man, I hope whatever bodybuilder pissed you off, hope you can really find in your heart to forgive him and then move on because it's obvious. You're clouding your, your, your education with anger at, at, at all of these bodybuilders. But either way, Mario, figure it out. At least I have an education, firstly. And second, of course I'm angry. I'm trying to help people escape the fitness matrix. Bodybuilding is the fitness matrix. Athletic bodybuilding improves your health, performance and your looks and that's what i want for everyone that's what i want for you behind the camera and i've done it firsthand without steroids with bad genetics and realized how much athletic bodybuilding not only improves your health but improves all aspects of your life so i'm going to be angry when people suggest something else which makes your life in all three departments mental social and physical worse and you guys please do your cardio and then train smarter you can do 20 sets just to make sure it's, it's not like 20 exhausting hard sets. Which was the entire point of my video. Don't do 20 hard sets, which doesn't have to be set. So this guy made a 10 minute video of rambling on about nothing. He could have made that video in three minutes, but it needs to be over eight minutes so he gets the extra ad revenue. Believe me, if you go watch his video, you'll realize the entire time it's all about nothing and he just repeats the same thing over and over and over again. But at this point, it's up to you. You can listen to an IFBB pro bodybuilder who has great genetics and has to take steroids for his career and suggest that the pec major extends the shoulder. Or you can listen to me, someone who had bad genetics, is anti-steroids, brought himself from being 130 pounds at the start of his journey to at 180 pounds at one point and understands the pec major flexes your shoulder. If you want to understand athletic bodybuilding and how it improves your life, check out this video here. Don't listen to this brickhead bodybuilder and I'll see you next time.